So today we talk about the composite Higgs. And the idea is that Higgs is not an elementary particle. So, um, so this idea is borrowed from QCD. In particular, we know that in QCD, we have uh, spin zero mesons, um, which are composite particles and uh, their mass is uh, related to the so-called uh, the confinement scale. And uh, the QCD scale is one GeV, it's far, far below the Planck scale. So there is a huge hierarchy between these scales. And this is perfectly natural. So this is an example of a natural theory which gives you uh, spin zero particles. Um, yeah, in, 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 with masses that are hierarchically smaller than some high UV scales. So um, at shorter distances in the, um, we have this, the, the perturbative QCD but actually the relevant degrees of freedom are quarks, which are spin zero, spin uh, one half, sorry, particles. So how do we explain why the confinement scale is so much smaller compared to the, say, the Planck scale? Um, this goes under the name of dimensional transmutation. In particular, we have the renormalization group running of the, of the, of the gauge coupling. So at very high energies, uh, QCD has the property of asymptotic freedom. So at very, very high energies or short distances, we are approaching the theory of, non on, of free quarks, non-interacting quarks. Um, in the opposite direction, when we go from high energies down to the low energy, there will be this, um, RGE running of the coupling. The, the, the important piece is this logarithm, which is responsible for this huge separation. So when we go to, 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 to low energies, the, at some point, the coupling will become four pi. It will become a, a strong coupling. And that is the, 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 the QCD scale. And um, so we are entering the strong, strong dynamics and, and the phenomena which is called confinement happens. There is, there is a phase transition. Uh, the, the, the QCD changes from being, you know, per, you know, regime of perturbative QCD of qu quarks and gluons. There is a quark gluon plasma. And then uh, when the temperature drops below, then you have um, hadrons. Uh, and, and some of those are spin zero mesons. So it's a perfectly natural way to separate the scales. And it's a fantastic explanation of the most of the mass in the, in the, in the universe. Some of the proton mass comes from this, this mechanism. Now, um, the, the composite Higgs takes this idea and the, the I will say in, in three bullet points, what are the, the basics of the composite Higgs models? So first of all, there is a new strong dynamics at scale lambda, where this scale is not far above the electroweak scale, okay? So there is a new strong dynamics, which confines at, at this scale lambda. And in the spectrum of composite particles due to these new strong dynamics, there is uh, the Higgs, okay? So the Higgs is a composite spin zero resonance of this new dynamics, okay? So the, the Higgs is not an elementary particle anymore. It's, 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 it's a composite particle, meaning that it, so it's not point-like, it has a finite size. And the, the, the size of it is inversely proportional to the scale lambda. And this setup solves the big hierarchy problem. Namely, um, if we go to shorter distances, uh, then the scale lambda, then we don't see anymore the Higgs, but we see its constituents, okay? So this solves the big hierarchy problem. This explains why 
there is such a huge separation between the um, the Planck scale and the, and the electroweak scale. Okay, because there is a strong dynamics near the electroweak scale, and one of the the compo composite resonance is actually the Higgs. That is the basic uh, um, point. The, the second point has to do with the phenomenology. Namely, at the LHC, we have not seen any other new resonance. Uh, we have seen only the Higgs. So we have seen only the Higgs. And this is very unusual. If, if the Higgs was one of the, um, one of the resonances in the strong sector, then, um, then we should have also seen, you know, his friends, companions uh, together with the Higgs. This suggests that, um, this suggests the following, that the Higgs mass should be somewhat small, should be smaller than the, than, than the, um, than the scale of strong dynamics, okay? So there should be a mass gap between the Higgs and other resonances the, the other, of this strong, strong sector. In fact, uh, in, in QCD, there are examples of uh, mesons which are naturally lighter from, uh, than other, from other resonances. These are pions, okay? Uh, and there is a symmetry reason behind this. In particular, pions are goldstone, pseudo goldstone bosons of the global symmetry of QCD which I will discuss in length in this lecture. So idea is that the spectrum shown here, um, so the, the, this, uh, this energy uh, scale, I have in mind something like, like, like this spectrum. So there is uh, the, the scale lambda over here, and then there, there, is a, a, there are a bunch of, uh, of, re of resonances of the new, new sector. However, the Higgs is um, below the scale because it's, 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 a, it's a pion. And um, naive dimensional analysis says that this uh, Higgs should be, um, by, be lighter by a factor of four pi, okay? This is just a naive estimate. And it is based on the following. So, we will have an explicit breaking. We will have an explicit breaking of the symmetry which makes pions completely massless. So there will be a symmetry which makes pions massless, Goldstone bosons. However, there will be an explicit breaking of this. And this explicit breaking will introduce quadratic corrections to the Higgs mass, okay? And naively, you would expect those to be proportional to the to the cutoff scale, which is the, the, is the co composite scale, the, the scale of the, of the resonances over 16 pi square. So it's a radiatively generated contribution. Um, this is the, the reason why I expect naively to have uh, Higgs to be four pi below the spectrum of, the, of other resonances. Um, of course, um, there, there are, of course, several contributions to the Higgs mass. So there could be tunings, etc. But this is just, a, you know, a, a naive expectation. <laughs> At this point, I would like to remind you of the Rho meson example from lecture two. Okay. So remember, in lecture two, we calculated the mass splitting between charged pion and neutral pion. Um, coming from the uh, quadratic sensitivity to the, to the mass of the Rho meson. And we concluded that this splitting is roughly consistent with the mass of the Rho over four, four pi. So the, the, the correction was, uh, um, was of that type. And, and that effect is actually measured and, and explains, explains the, <coughs> the mass difference, okay? All right, so the, the bullet point number two is that the, um, the phenomenology tells us there should be a mass gap between the, the Higgs and other resonances. And the natural way to explain this is to 
is if if the Higgs was a pseudo Goldstone boson of the strong symmetry, not just a random spin zero resonance, but actually a a, a pseudo Goldstone boson. Okay, and the third point has to do with the fact that that four pi um, suppression is not um, is not enough. You know, so this four pi was, uh, of course, uh, just a naive expectation, but it is not enough. In fact, lambda. That, that would predict, so Higgs mass is 125 um, GeV times 4 pi, something like 1.5 TeV. And we have already entered this territory with the LHC direct searches. Um, in addition, we have indirect constraints from electroweak precision data, which suggests that um, this, is a little bit, this is a little bit too low. We would be, the phenomenology wants the scale of these particles to be more like 10 TeV. So the, the third point in these constructions of um, composite Higgs models has to do with the, this problem of um, little hierarchy. So if you put um, the, the compositeness scale at 10 TeV, then the, you need to have either uh, at some cancellation between different contributions so, for example, you have uh, you, so you have uh, several symmetry breaking terms, for instance, coming from the Yukawa sector or from the gauge sector. Um, so they have to sort of finely tune to some degree, which is at the level of few percent. So either you have a, a few percent tuning, or you have um, this bullet point number three. It is, a, it is a model building trick how to solve this little hierarchy problem. In particular, you can have some states which are called the partners, okay, the partner states. And these are, they, they stick in between the, the compositeness scale and the Higgs mass. And these states, just like stops in supersymmetry, they Above the ma their mass, they contribute to the to the to the Higgs self energy to the Higgs mass, and they cancel the contribution from the top quark uh, um, and and okay, so there will be top partners, and there will be W partners. So th these partners will um, will cancel the 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 quadratic dependence that comes from the from the loops of. Um, of tops, tops and W. So uh, in that setup, then the, the Higgs mass is actually sensitive to the, to the partner mass, okay? So the Higgs mass in that setup will be related to the partner mass. Okay, so, so um, not, not anymore to, to lambda, meaning that uh, you can have this setup that you have a, um, so you have the Higgs at 125 GV, and then you have partners, for example, at 1.5 TV. Um, for example, um, fermionic top partner. Current limits uh, are already approaching 1 TV, so somewhere uh, close to that. Um, and the compositeness scale to be at 10, 10 TV. Okay. And this Third trick has to do with the, with, the, with the idea of the little Higgs. So this is a class of these models which goes under the name of little Higgs. And I will talk about this a little bit. But this was actually a, a, a very short um, summary of, of, of my talk. So I will go in, de in, in, in great details. Um, so let me just quickly uh, remind you of these three points. So the first one is the that the Higgs is a, is a composite state and this solves the big hierarchy problem. The second one is that the Higgs is not just some random spin zero resonance, but it's actually a pseudo Goldstone boson. And this gives us some separation between the, the compositeness scale and the Higgs mass. However, this, does not, um, this, this doesn't seem to be enough from the phenomenological point of view. 
So either we accept some small tuning between different terms that contribute to the Higgs potential, or we have additional structures that we have light partners of, uh, of, um, of top and W and particles which uh, contribute in the, in the loop um, in such a way to, to, um, to push the composite scale even, even further, the strong dynamics even further. Okay, so the, this is the, the, the basic idea. Uh, are there any questions at this point? Ah, okay, so could you go to the first bullet point? So, so I can ask you the, the question. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so you say there is a new strong dynamics at scale lambda. And I mean, I'm not sure I understand this. So why should the, like, what's the argument for that exactly? Uh, that, that is just an assumption. It's, it's the same as saying there is a QCD or there is electroweak. It's just additional gauge group, which confines a copy of QCD, which confines a few decades uh, uh, before QCD. It's just an assumption. Okay, okay, o okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions? Yeah, I would have a question about your last point about these um, other partners that you have in the little Higgs model. So what kind of particles could this be? So there, these are the, uh, I will talk about this later in the, in, in the talk in more details, but these are effectively um, heavy tops, okay? Vector-like quarks, so the top partners and uh, things like W primes and Z primes. So the partners of the particles which have standard model quantum numbers similar to top and W and also the, the yeah, so the gauge and the Lorentz representations, um, but are heavier, they're heavy partners. Okay, thanks. So these are, these are, these are particles that, um, you know, these, these searches at the LHC are motivated by these kind of models. Okay, so the, um, the literature for today's lecture is the, the, um, the this TASI lecture on, on BSM on, on non-SUSI BSM, which is um, most of the material is actually from this reference. Then there is a big review. Um, I think, um, yeah, hundreds of, hundreds of pages review of um, uh, Panico and Wulzer on, on the composite number Goldstone Higgs, which is a very nice um, um, reference. Then there is our standard reference from Matthew McCall on Beyond the Standard Model. And finally, some parts are taken from the, the, the textbook of uh, Schwartz on quantum field theory and the standard model. Okay, the, um, so let us really start with the basics. So the, the spontaneous symmetry breaking phenomena. So the, the essence of this phenomena is that you have, um, the theory is symmetric. So the, the Lagrangian has a symmetry but the symmetric vacuum is actually unstable. Um, it, actually, it is the false vacuum. The true ground state, the true vacuum, breaks the symmetry. So that, that is the essence of this phenomena. So the true vacuum is not symmetric. Okay. So we, we say that the, the, the symmetry is hidden. Maybe the word broken is actually in, in slightly misleading. The symmetry is hidden by the asymmetric uh, ground state, but the theory nonetheless has this symmetry. It just is manifested uh, in, 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 in more subtle ways. So, the, uh, so when we have a, a continuous global symmetry, then we have conserved currents and, con and conserved charges. And this is the Noether theorem. And in particular, conserved charge means that it commutes with the Hamiltonian of the of the of the of the theory, um, and also the the conserved charge is actually the generator of the symmetry. So in, it's really like the, the basis uh, element of the Lie algebra, which generates the transformation, uh, the symmetry transformation, and you can see this by this commutation relation over here. 
So if you do, do the commutator of the, the, the charge uh, with the field, you will get the variation of the field. And if you exponentiate this relation, you will get the, the, the transformation. So conserved jar, charge is the symmetry generator and the transformation is the, the exponent of the charge as we discussed last time. So the, the mathematical formulation of the spontaneous symmetry breaking means that the vacuum is charged. So meaning if you take the, if you act with the generator of the symmetry, which is the charge of the, of the uh, which is the conserved charge on the vacuum, um, the, you don't get zero. Meaning if you, if you exponentiate this, so if you do a group transformation on the vacuum, it does not stay invariant. So it changes. So you take, uh, you act on the, on, on the with the transformation of the vacuum, it changes. It would be a symmetric vacuum if it stayed the same under the group transformation. Okay, so, um, in fact, there are multiple ground states, possible ground states. If, whenever you act with the, with, the, with, the, with the generator on the vacuum, you get another, uh, that thing will be, um, you can show that this is the generate with the, the uh, it has the same energy, the ground state um, uh, with, with the original one, which you, with, with which you started. So there are multiple ground states. And you go from one another by doing the, 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 the symmetry transformation. In quantum field theory, what happens is that um, the, the system cannot stay in the unstable vacuum, which is the symmetric one. And, and that is not the minimum of the energy. It will simply spontaneously pick one of the true ground states. This is why it's called spontaneous symmetry break. And it will stay in that state because the, the quantum tunneling is zero in quantum. In quantum. Um, um, okay, if that's an absolute minimum, there will be no tunneling from one to other ground state. <laughs> okay, so that is about the, the ground state. But then there is one uh, very interesting thing you can do with this conserved charge. In particular, you can dig out a very interesting one particle state. So if you act with this um, conserved um, uh, guy on the vacuum, and you have, you have this in this way with this momenta P over here. So P, you can dig out one particle state called the pion. Uh, you can create one particle state and you can show that this state is massless. So intuitively um, it will be like the excitation which goes because the, the charge acting on the ground state will move in this degeneracy um, direction. And uh, therefore, um, that, that is the pion excitations corresponds to this uh, very intuitively to this degeneracy direction. You can, you can show that this is, uh, um, I, I'm sk skipping some steps, which, which, you, which come basically from these commutation relations up there that I, that I uh, gave. So pion is massless. And this is the Goldstone theorem. So whenever you have a, um, a, a broken generator, spontaneous symmetry breaking, for every broken generator, broken meaning the, the one which does not annihilate the vacuum, there is a massless uh, state, massless particle in the spectrum of your theory. That is the essence of the Goldstone boson. Uh, or, uh, and this is a very useful relation which helps you identify the Goldstone boson in your spectrum. So um, the conserved current acting on the vacuum creates a, a pion uh, that is proportional to the, this F pi, which is pion decay constant and will come uh, often in this lecture. And to match the Lorentz, um, there is this, the, the momentum of the pion, okay. Okay. All right. So uh, let's do a, a concrete example. So let's take a complex scalar field, phi of x, and the following Lagrangian. In particular, 
uh, there will be this potential, three level potential that has two terms, minus M square and Lambda. So this Lagrangian is invariant under the U1 um, global symmetry. So there is a U1 phase uh, rotation meaning that the field is transformed by multiplying with the, with, the, with the phase e to i theta. And this is the group parameter. So theta is the group parameter, okay? So you can check very easily that the, the Lagrangian is invariant under this transformation. However, let's have a look at the, the, um, the form of the potential. So the potential has this Mexican hat form uh, so you should think of uh, this in two dimensions when you take this curve and you rotate it. Okay, and that is the, the, the form of this potential. Um, so the, the symmetric ground state, which is th this one here, sorry, the symmetric vacuum, not the ground state, is, is unstable. Okay, it's an, it's an unstable field configuration and it will decay, I mean, it go to, 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 to one of the ground states. The, the ground states are um, uh, are shown in the in the in on, are sitting on the circle which is perpendicular to this plane. So so the theory will pick one randomly, uh, spontaneously. Take uh, and 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 the, the physics is the, the same. However, you choose whichever you choose to to sit in doesn't depend on this. So uh, the the field will take the the vacuum expectation value. And that will spontaneously break the, 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 the U1 symmetry. Now the, we have to expand the field around this, um, around this, um, uh, around this co uh, configuration. Um, so there will be two real fields, uh, sigma and pi. So sigma will be the radial component which will correspond to this excitation that need energy going up and uphill, okay, left and right. While the pion will be the, the, the polar coordinate, which basically moves you around this circle. So, the, and there you don't need uh, any, uh, sort of, you don't need any energy because you are going, um, um, you are going in the direction of the other ground state. And then the pion will be massless, okay? So sigma will be massive field and pion will be massless. There's an interesting representation of this field phi of x. So you can write it in this form. So this f pi, f pi is the, is the, the vacuum expectation value. So then you can have this sigma of x and then this pi of x here. And pi of x, there is this, the same f pi uh, in the exponent, simply to have the, the 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 good canonical normalization of the pi field. Okay. So, um, if you write it in this form, okay, and you plug it in into the potential, you can see that the potential does not depend depend on the pion. The potential then depends. So there will be, there will be you know, the, the, the charge conjugate, the, uh, the, there won't be exponent basically. The potential will not depend on pion. So pions do not develop a potential. They, 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 they stay massless while the sigma will have a, the, the potential. So this is how the U1 transformation acts on the individual components. Uh, so phi prime tra transforms in this way. And then you can see that the, 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 the sigma is invariant. It's a singlet of, uh, I mean, it does not, um, sigma is uh, like this. And then there is a pion. Pion will change, okay? The, the pi prime will change in this way, okay? So this is called the shift symmetry. Um, pion, Pion will change under this transformation by, by this shift, which is a constant, basically a constant number. It depends on the, on the group parameter by this shift. And this forbids the mass term. Okay. So you can have only derivative interactions of the pion. 
that is uh, derivative interactions are allowed by the by the by the global symmetry. So, but the 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 mass term. will uh, master will explicitly break the u1 however it is technically natural m is technically natural um, uh, meaning that if we send it to zero we enhance the symmetry so the when we were discussing the hierarchy problem we mentioned that the fermions for instance have the chiral symmetry which makes their mass uh, technically natural uh, the shift symmetry is something which makes the mass of scalars technically natural, can make, depending also on other things in the, in the, in the theory, but they can make the, the, the mass technically natural. So this is the, the, the idea of the Higgs as being the pseudo Goldstone. Okay. All right. So let's, let's uh, march on. Let's come to the chiral symmetry of QCD. So the, we will focus here on two fla quark flavors. So let, let's consider QCD with two quark flavors. Um, so the first term here shows the, um, so the first term here is the kinetic term for the fields. And we know that we have kinetic term, independent terms for the left chiral uh, fields and the right, right, right chiral fields, both for up and down quarks. And D is the covariant derivative, which contains the interactions uh, with, with gauge bosons, for example, with, gluon, uh, with gluons. D can uh, also have other interactions like electroweak interactions inside D. Uh, the second term here is the mass term for the, um, for the, for different um, quarks, quark flavors, up, m up and m down. Okay. Now at at the scale that we are interested in, the QCD scale, um, QCDs are um, the domi dominant interactions. Okay, the dominant effects come from from strong strong dynamics. Uh, everything else in this Lagrangian is a perturbation. For example, uh, the the masses of the quarks are much smaller than the QCD scale, okay? And also electroweak interactions are much smaller than the QCD interactions. Okay, if you neglect these terms, so the, the, it, it's a it's very smart thing to do to, to first neglect these terms and see uh, what, what kind of symmetry structure do we have? There is in fact a global symmetry, which is U2L times U2R. So one should note that the, the, there are two left chiral fields, two left chiral fields, which are triplet of SU3 color, okay? And two right chiral fields, which are anti-triplet. So we have a pair of um, um, two representations. So uh, we have two triplets and, and, uh, and two anti-triplets. Now, when I put the charge conjugate, all of these fields are left chiral fields, which means that I can, I have the, um, I can do a global symmetry. I can rotate um, left chiral fields independently from the right chiral fields, okay? Okay, now this U2 cross U2 is basically, we can write it down as the, the product of uh, SU2s, the special unitary transformation, um, and U1s, the, 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 the phases. So uh, the axial phase is actually not a symmetry at quantum level, it's anomalous. So we will not consider that one further. We will consider U1 vector, uh, um, which is the phase that transforms all four fields in the same way, U left, uh, D left, uh, U right, uh, D right. 
However, the central is the non-abelian part, which is called the this is called the chiral symmetry. SU2 left cross SU2 right. So we have two chiral representations. Uh, So the, there is the, the, the psi left, left left field, psi left is a doublet of uh, U left and D left. So I, I put, uh, I will put in the upper component U left and D left in the down component. And this is two under uh, SU2 left and it's a singlet on the right. And likewise for the right-handed field. Um, so here is the transformation. Show, shown, shown. So the, this is a doublet of SU two, so it transforms in this way, where um, alpha, L, and R are the corresponding parameters of the of the of the group. So this is for the left SU two left, and this is for the SU two right. Okay. So. Now we come back to the QCD phase transition. So about 10 microseconds after the Big Bang, there was this transition um, in QCD. So when the temperature drop below the, the, the QCD scale, the, 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 then there was this phase transition of, of quark gluon plasma going to hadrons. Um, and this is the phenomena of confinement. Okay. This is what we call the confinement. It, it triggers this, it is underlying this phase transition and it's, 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 it's actually not well understood at all. So this, this phenomena is not really, um, it's actually one of the millennium problems to try to understand this from the first uh, principle. Nonetheless, um, we do not know the details of this, um, all the details of this, um, how the, the chiral symmetry breaking uh, quark condensate form but still we can use the power of symmetry to compute the consequences. So for instance, we think that the ground state of QCD, the ground state of QCD develops um, a non-zero expectation value for this quark bilinears. So you take U bar U operator and D bar D operator and, and then in the ground state of um, uh, this vacuum expectation in the ground state of QCD is non-zero, and in fact, it so so it is um, it is uh, the the this QCD is proportional to QCD scale cubed cube to match the the, the canonical dimensions of these. Remember uh, the that uh, fermion is three half, so three half square is. Um, so we have twice, sorry, three half two times two, so we have uh, this cube. Um, and note that the, the strength of the condensate is the same both for, um, for up and for down. That is very important, okay? We know this by, um, we deduce this by, uh, by matching the spectrum of the, of the, of the, of the tier. So what does this mean? This means that this condensate, vacuum expectation value of these fields breaks the chiral symmetry. So this was the, the original chiral symmetry group G. It breaks it to a subgroup H where H is the diagonal subgroup of the initial product. And this is known as isospin. SU2V is the isospin group. And this is broken by this condensate. So, um, if you look at the form of this condensate, so it is a, it's, it's, a, it's a psi left bar psi right. So the, this condensate, the, the vacuum stays the same if you do this transformation. So if you assume that the, um, if you assume that the left rotations and right rotations are the same, that is the definition of the diagonal subgroup that you do the left and right rotation in the same way, then the, the, you don't touch the, the, the ground state. The ground state is invariant. However, if you do it, um, if, you, if your left and right rotations are not the same, then you are changing the vacuum. 
that that corresponds to the broken uh, generators, broken directions. Okay. So let's. Um, um, since QCD is very, is, I mean, it's complicated. Let, let's um, let's just to, to understand what's happening. Take um, a complex scalar field, just some to, toy model with some toy potential. So it's a toy potential and toy model. So complex scalar field sigma that is uh, in fundamental of the two SU twos, and it transforms this way. So it has two indices, just like the condensate. Okay. I and J, and there is a potential for this field, um, which will then uh, be by, by the vacuum expectation value of this field, which is of this type, proportional to identity in two by two space, will lead to uh, spontaneous symmetry breaking of the chiral symmetry to isospin. So we can do some group theory and figure out that in the spectrum, um, we will have, so, so it's, um, so the, the bilinear, okay, so let, let's go slowly. So if you, in the chiral, in the chiral group, uh, the bilinear is the direct product of, uh, of the, of the two doublets. In the broken subgroup in the isospin, um, you have the, the decomposition of the two, two times two bar of the direct product of representation and as the, as the direct sum of the of the irreducible representation, so you have uh, sigma is uh, a singlet, and these pions are triplets. So in the spectrum, you will have the sigma and the pions. Um, so first of all, th these are really pions. These are Goldstone bosons because now, if you put this guy into the potential, the potential does not depend on pion. Okay, so pions do not develop a potential. There is no master. Second. We can do the, let's see how the um, pions transform under the symmetry, uh, under the global chiral symmetry. So we can, this is how the, the sigma transforms. And then the, the, taking the infinitesimal transformation, pions transform in this way. Um, and there are also higher order terms here. So I stopped at the linear order. So, here, let's have a look at this combination. So if I assume that the, the left and right rotations are the same, okay, then this piece drops because um, yeah, that piece is, it goes away and I'm left with this piece here. And then you can recognize that this is just, um, um, that, this is, that pion is just a triplet of SU2V. Uh, SU2V is the subgroup, the isospin. So pion is the triplet of isospin. That's how the triplet, this is the adjoint representation of SU2, okay? Now, if I assume the opposite relation, namely that alpha L equal minus alpha R, then this piece goes is zero, but I have this term here, okay? And, and, and here you see that the pion is shifted by some constant value. So these are the broken generators. And this is the, 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 the SU2 axial uh, shift symmetry of the pion, which protects um, the pion from getting the mass. Okay. This transformation is non-linear. There are these other terms in the in, in the in the in the in, in, the, uh, in the thing. So, something which was very useful in, in the in, in the in the literature is so-called chiral perturbation theory. So we can take this idea and um, use the power of effective field theories. Pions are lighter than these um, because they are Goldstone bosons, pseudo Goldstone bosons than the rest of the QCD spectrum. So we can actually formulate TFT assuming that the only dy dynamical degrees are pions, okay? So pions are the only dynamical degrees of freedom in, in this uh, effective theory. 
And I will be doing things with pions, let's say pion scattering at some energy which is much smaller. The energy is much smaller than let's say M sigma, the mass of the typical uh, resonance which sits at this scale. So I'm, I'm colliding pions at uh, 100 MeV and this scale is, uh, um, yeah. this scale is uh, a bit below GeV, okay. Um, okay, so now um, I can remove the, for example, in that previous thing, um, field sigma that I, that I had, I can remove the, the, the sigma and keep only the pions. So this is the new field that I'm working with. This new field only contains pions. Uh, the way to construct this field is that you take the vacuum, you act on the vacuum with the broken generators and you promote the parameters of that transformation to be fields. Those are the pions and that's the way to construct the, 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 the field, U of X. So now here, you, if you, uh, these are the Pauli matrices here, and you can recognize the, the usual triplet of QCD, pi zero, pi minus, and pi plus. One important thing, and this will come uh, back later on in the discussion, is the fact that this uh, field is uh, unitary, uh, meaning U, U dagger is one. It's, it's a unitary matrix, it's two, it's, it's two by two matrix, which is unit. So now uh, you can use the, the, the technique of effective field theory. You have your field and you have your symmetry. So you have chiral symmetry and, you, and then you can write down the, the terms. The leading term will be this one. So you will have a, a derivative of u, derivative mu of u dagger. And you can do this transformation with, uh, remember this transformation here. But now you are doing this transformation for the, for the U field. And you can check that these terms that I wrote down here are uh, invariant under the, under the transformation. So this theory will describe the, um, for example, pion pion scattering. It's a very successful theory which, which, which describes the, the, this physics. A low energy um, effective theory of QCD. Uh, higher order terms in these expansions are some, get some Wilson coefficients, uh, et cetera. So you really don't need to know if you are interested in what's happening uh, with pions, you don't need to know too many details about, let's say, the confinement and the, 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 the strong dynamics, uh, etc. Why am I saying these things? Uh, because we have discovered the Higgs and we want to understand its dynamics, but our collider energy, LHC, is not yet powerful enough. The, 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 the center of mass energy is not enough to probe the strong, to come to the strong sector. We might be really in the situation that we are doing chiral perturbation theory. That, we, that our Higgs is a pion and we are just looking at the properties of the pion. So um, yes, so this kind of formalism is very useful. Okay. Uh, so of course, chiral perturbation theory um, has terms which explicitly break it. There is explicit breaking. As I mentioned before, we have the masses of the quarks and we have the electroweak interactions, which we neglected but now uh, we put them in ba ba back again and they represent the explicit breaking of the chiral symmetry of the global symmetry. Um, so for example, the mass of the, of the quarks M is the explicit breaking. We can treat this as a spurion. What does this mean? So we can assume uh, that it is some, some field some background field which has the, tra the transformation property under the full chiral under the chiral symmetry, namely that it is bifundamental. Okay. In such a way that the term that we write is formally invariant, and then we can think of it in the second stage that this background field gets a, uh, uh, gets gets a value. Okay, like so, 
some some uh, some you can think it think of it as a, like uh, some scalar field that got to the 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 web. Um, and the, the rule of the game, as we discussed in the EFT um, lecture, the first class is to write down all these invariant terms. And then the, the only thing which does explicit breaking is the web of these purions. So for instance, we can, this was in perturbative QCD, right? Well, perturbative, this was in, is, uh, sorry, in, this is in, in QCD, uh, but, 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 um, we would need the lattice, uh, for example, or some non-perturbative methods to, to start from the first principle. But we want to do it from the chiral perturbation theory. In chiral perturbation theory, we don't have quarks, but we have the, the pion fields, U. And we can write this term, which is formally invariant under the chiral symmetry. And now the, the, the spurion will pick the values it has, and then, we will get something like this. In particular, in particular, uh, here there is an important result, which is uh, by Gelman, uh, Oaks, and uh, Renner, uh, saying that the the, the, the the pion mass squared is linearly proportional to the to the quark masses, which are fundamental pa input parameters in, uh, in here. And you see that pions get a mass. Okay, so they are pseudo Goldstone boson. So explicit breaking of the of this global symmetry is something which will give the potential to pions and will lead to the mass. One example in current perturbation theory is this. Uh, okay, so uh, at, at this point I will stop. So we, I discussed the explicit breaking due, due to quark masses. Now um, I'll discuss the, the 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 gauge interactions. Okay. The explicit breaking due to the gauge interactions. So in the standard model, it's it's very interesting that um, the 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 SU two left part of the chiral um, global group is actually gauged. Okay, this is the the the. So, so what what that, does that mean? So you have a global symmetry. Uh, where the parameter of the symmetry does not depend on the space-time point. Gauging means that that, that generator with the parameter we make uh, local, okay? We make this global transformation local. And this is the, the SU2 left of the electroweak group. The interaction which brings in a w, uh, w boson, for example. So the, the left-handed uh, quark field of the standard model is actually our PSYL. It's a doublet where we put left left up and left down of the, the, this doublet. Okay. Uh, also, the, we know that there is another group, gauge group in the standard model. And this is the hypercharge, U1 hypercharge. So U1 hypercharge is actually a combination of generators. It is the, the, the sigma three over two generator of the SU2 right. So it is this diagonal generator of SU2 right. The, 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 the Cartan generator um, and, uh, and the U1, U1V. Remember this vectorial U1 that was uh, part of the, of the global group. Um, so, so if we take that uh, under this global U1V, we have uh, the fields Psi left and Psi right have the one sixth one six the 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 this uh, uh, number quantum number, then you can check that the hypercharge works out. In particular, the left-handed uh, quark doublet is zero because uh, it doesn't have the any right-handed charge. Plus one six, it's one six. The usual hypercharge and all and so on. U right will be two thirds, and D right will be minus one third. Okay. So you see that the part of the of the global symmetry of the strong sector is actually gauged. Some generators of it are gauged. And in fact, um, if the entire thing was gauged, then there would be no explicit breaking. But because we only gauged a part of it, 
this asymmetry brings uh, uh, yeah bring, brings the explicit breaking so the recipe to introduce the explicit breaking due to gauge interactions in the chiral lagrangian is to first gauge the entire global group and this means that we uh, practically replace the ordinary derivatives with the covariant derivatives for the u field and then we remove by hand okay unwanted gauge fields for example uh, the field will come with sigma one of right-handed and sigma two of right-handed you can just simply take them away okay and this is explicit breaking of g by gauging the part of it um all right, so that's how we uh, give for, do the, the explicit breaking or, or due to gauge symmetry of the, of the chiral Lagrange. Now, something very interesting. Imagine there was no Higgs field at all. So standard model without the Higgs, okay? Note that QCD confinement would actually break the electro-V gauge group. So, SU2 left is, is the part of SU2 left chiral, chiral is, that's the, and the U1 hypercharge is the part in part, uh, it has this SU2 right. Uh, the QCD confinement will break this to the, to the diagonal U1 QED, where, where, where the electric charge is given by the sum of the T3 left, T3R and the uh, Y nu. So the QCD confinement will do the, the correct electrovic symmetry breaking, the one that we see. So it will break SU2 left times U1 hypercharge down to the U1 QED. If there was no Higgs field in the, in, in the standard model, okay? In that universe, uh, if, if it exists, the, then pions would be eaten up by uh, W and Z. So pions would be, would be Goldstone bosons that are eaten by pi W and Z. It's the gauging of the spontaneous symmetry breaking. And therefore we would have W with the mass of G times F pi, something like uh, below 100 MeV, 50 MeV or something like that. W and Z would be mass, massive. Uh, there would be no pions. There would be pions would, would be eaten up by W and W and Z. Um, and and we, we, would, uh, we would have the, uh, the, again, the correct electrovic symmetry breaking. Uh, Admir, sorry, may I ask you something? Yes, please. Um, so which, uh, so about this point, not that QCD confinement breaks. So can you maybe give an example of which term do you have in mind? Um, say it again. I mean the I mean the 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 psi left bar psi right. The value of this, you know that this this term basically has the quantum numbers of the Higgs. Yes, exactly. Yes. So so this is the 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 condensate. That is the the the, the non-zero vacuum expectation value of this bilinear breaks. Uh, yeah, is the condensate uh, that that breaks the, the chiral symmetry, but the, the that condensate will also break the gauge symmetry. The, the condensate does not break QCD, okay? It breaks the chiral symmetry, the global symmetry of QCD, and also the electroweak symmetry. If there was not Higgs field. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I think I got it. Okay, thank you. Sure. All right. So in fact, in past, before we found the Higgs, there was a very popular idea about the nature of electrovic symmetry uh, breaking. And it was called Technicolor. And the idea was that uh, you just uh, scale up QCD, the scaled up version of QCD, um, where the, the, um, the, the confinement directly breaks the, the, the just 
literally this scenario, just at, at, at electroweak scale. And in that, that then uh, pions are written up. They are basically the, the longitudinal components of W and Z. And there is no Higgs in the spectrum. These were Higgs-less models. Um, which is very elegant uh, from theoretical point of view. It's a very elegant uh, solution. However, nature didn't choose it. We have found the Higgs. Okay, so this this is technicolor is ruled out. Um, so composite Higgs. <clears throat> In composite Higgs, the the main difference with respect to technicolor is that the unbroken group. Um, contains the 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 the, the electroweak group in it, in itself. Okay, so the the, the electroweak group is part of the unbroken group, and therefore condensate does not break electroweak. I hope this is uh, th that's clear. Condensate does not break electroweak. Um, so the, the in, in composite Higgs electroweak gauge group is subgroup of age, where age is the is the ala isospin. So age is the subgroup of the new strong. So G is the global symmetry of the new strong sector, which is spontaneously broken to age when the new strong force confines. The electroweak gauge group is the subgroup of age. So we gauge generators inside age, not G. Remember in Technicolor, SU2 left was gauged. It was the part of G. And therefore the, the, the condensate which break the, the chiral symmetry also breaks the, the electroweak symmetry. Here, no. So the condensate F, um, which, confine, which is the, the, the confinement of the strong force does not break electroweak. We have uh, this uh, um, Goldstone bosons. So there are G over H coset, meaning broken generators. Um, for each broken generator, there is a, a, a Goldstone boson. And Higgs will be one of those Goldstone bosons. Okay. So since we have explicit breaking of, of G, uh, due to Yukawa interactions or gauge interactions, then the Goldstone boson will not be a Goldstone boson, but a pseudo Goldstone boson. It will develop a vacuum, it will develop a potential. The potential might have a form such that the, the, the Higgs field gets a vacuum expectation value. Then that will be the electroweak symmetry breaking. So what I mean by that, let's, let's focus on this cartoon here. The, the, the symmetries in this cartoon do not correspond to the composite Higgs, but nonetheless, it's a very, very nice cartoon. So imagine that G, the global symmetry are three uh, are rotations in three dimensional space, okay? And H are the rotations in some plane. H is a subgroup of G, all right? Now, the vector F, is perpen perpendicular to age. And this vector F is the condensate va vacuum expectation value. Uh, so it's, so it's, the, it's, the, it's the condensate of the strong force. So if you do rotations uh, with, with age, you don't change the F, meaning that uh, rotations in age are invariant. I mean, F is invariant under rotations in age. So age is, is unbroken. But if you do other two rotations, then you will move the vector phi, okay? And these directions that uh, these represented by theta, these are pion directions, Goldstone directions. Goldstone will move the, 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 the vacuum in these directions. Now, if Goldstone gets a web, so if this explicit breaking of the, of the group G generates a potential for the Higgs. Higgs is the Goldstone. And it gets a web. It will move. It will misalign. So that's the term, vacuum misalignment. It will move the condensate a little bit, shift it by this angle. And the projection of that will be the electroweak web. The projection on that on the subgroup H. 
I hope this was not too complicated. Um, so the, the web of the angle theta leads to the vacuum misalignment. Um, well, why is this vacuum misalignment important? To the, it gives a very nice feature to the composite Higgs in comparison to let's say Technicolor. So now we have a parameter, which is basically this web of the, um, of this, uh, this thing, or, or psi, which is the ratio of V square over F pi square, uh, that we can control. Um, and in particular, when this parameter is sent to zero, we can recover the, the standard model Higgs properties. In the experiments so far, we have observed the Higgs and also measured its couplings that to some level of precision uh, agree with the standard model expectation. So composite Higgs should better have a way to, to go to the standard model limit in, uh, of, the, of the Higgs properties. And this vacuum misalignment mechanism is, this, uh, is, is that method. Uh, F pi is, uh, is the scale, remember the pi on decay constant. And usual, the usual re relation between F pi and, uh, and, and strong uh, compositeness, the, the, strong, the scale of the resonances of the strong sector is roughly something like F pi times four pi. This is a very rough, um, rough relation be the, between the, the F pi, the fine decay constant and, the, and the, the, the proton mass. If you send this parameter psi, to zero, then uh, you can keep web fixed and you can push F pi. And by pushing F pi, you can also push lambda. So lambda and F pi, they go uh, together up. Of course, we talked about radiative corrections and uh, making this size smaller and smaller would require uh, more and more tuning or more Baroque models a la little Higgs, okay? So if you want, if you don't want to tune a lot, um, then the, then you expect to see in experiment some modification of the Higgs properties. But definitely, this is very different as compared to the to the Technicolor because we have a way in composite Higgs to have the, the properties of the Higgs clo arbitrarily close to the standard model by by tuning this parameter. So vacuum misalignment is one term that you should remember about the composite X models. And now uh, I will give you a toy example, which will also introduce some other techniques, which if you want to do model building in composite X models, that, that some tool that one should, uh, um, that, that one should be aware of and, and, and uh, learn. So this model example is not realistic at all. It's excluded by data, but it's very simple in terms of uh, manip group, group theory and manipulations that, and it contains also these basic ingredients. Um, so the, there is a new strong dynamics where the global group is SU3, the global group of the strong sector, and is broken spontaneously by the condensate of strong dynamics to SU2. So we have SU3 to SU2, GH. So this is three by three matrix, which contains um, generators of the, of, the, of the global group G. And uh, so this is Gelman matrices basically. In, in the first two by two block, we will have unbroken SU2 generators, which are Pauli matrices, sigma I, and these are uh, TA, TI there will be five broken generators. Eight is the total number of for SU3 minus three for SU2, there will be five broken generators. Also in this example, we will gauge the entire age. So age will be gauged. So we will have, this will be SU2 left. It's a toy model, so there is no hypercharge. So here we will have only W bosons. So we are doing composite Higgs because the, we are gauging the, the, the invariant subgroup, meaning that the condensate will not uh, break uh, uh, gauge symmetry. All right, so how do we construct the Goldstone field? So remember, 
you have to take the VEV. This thing is the VEV of the SU3 cross SU2. This thing here. And then you have to act on the VEV with the group transformation, which belongs to the broken generators and the parameters you should promote to pion fields. So you have five of those. In particular, there is the Higgs field, which has four components, four real components. And there is this eta singlet. So there is additional Goldstone singlet, uh, which we have not found yet, but it's somewhere with the, together with the, I mean, could be together with the, with the Higgs. Uh. <clears throat> so this is how the transformation works. U transforms as a triplet of the, um, so, so there is this SU3 transformation uh, on U. Now you can expand the exponent uh, in the expansion. There, there, there will be leading terms in age will be this one, which is linear in age, and this one, which is, um, this is called quadratic piece in H square. And then there are higher order terms which contain age and, and eta as well. So that is how U looks to a leading order. So it is, uh, this here is two by one block and this is just one by one. In, in the entire thing is three by one. Okay, so that was it. If when we do the gauging, uh, we do explicit breaking. That, that, that was the, the sort of the chiral symmetry, the, 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 the global symmetry part. Now we do the breaking. The first one is with the gauging. So remember the procedure. We first gauge the entire group G. When we gauge the entire group G, and if you want to calculate for these kind of diagrams where we have scalars on this side, then uh, since we did, we did not introduce any breaking at this point, then uh, the, the result will be u dagger u with the, with the quadratic dependence. But remember that uh, the u dagger u is, uh, um, does not depend on the Goldstone bosons. So the, uh, because of the nature of the u field, there are no Goldstone bosons here, so they will not develop a potential. There will be no mass, which is quadratically sensitive to, to it. This is because uh, if you gauge all the generators, there is no explicit breaking in it. Then the second step is to remove the unwanted gauge fields and keep only the, the, the SU2 ones, which are here, okay, in this two by two block. Now, because we remove those fields, we introduce an explicit breaking. And in particular, when you now compute these diagrams, uh, you have the breaking spurion. So there is something uh, which comes in between U dagger U, this P thing, which is formally an octet of SU3. And it has to have this form. It has to have this form. So it should be one, one, zero, because uh, it has to respect the gauge symmetry. So you are doing the loops with the gauge symmetry and, and then you want to calculate, say, Coleman-Weinberg. The terms in the Coleman-Weinberg should respect the gauge symmetry, okay? Um, your renormalization, uh, so the symmetry and renormalization. So this P is a spurion which breaks the global symmetry, but respects the gauge symmetry because it comes from the loops of the gauge uh, interactions. So it has the form 110. Okay, and uh, so you can put it there and you can see that basically it will give you the corrections to the Higgs mass. And this correction to the Higgs mass will go, will be quadratic in the, in the cutoff scale. So if we had all, if we, if we gauge the entire thing, we would not have quadratic correction to the Higgs mass because we did not break the global symmetry explicitly. But when we do, when we remove the fields, uh, unwanted gauge fields, then we have explicit breaking and therefore there we, we have a quadratic dependence of the Higgs mass. 
pretty much the, the same story for the Yukawa interactions. So consider right-handed field to be a singlet, both of gauge group and, and of global group, and the left-handed field to be a doublet of gauge group. But if you want to have um, uh, it invariant under the global group, which is SU3, then you should introduce um, a, a new field, TL. So QL contains uh, top left, B left. This TL will be something like um, additional top, left-handed top, which is actually a singlet of SU2. We, this is just a field which we introduced to complete the multiplet. So now this thing is a triplet, anti-triplet, this is a triplet. So this thing here is now invariant under uh, global group. And therefore these interactions, because they don't, uh, in, in this form, they don't break the, the global group. And then the, this has to be proportional to U dagger U and U dagger U does not have Goldstone bosons. So Goldstones will not receive a mass. However, we explicitly break this just simply by removing this field. Okay, just, uh, yeah. How do you remove this field? Well, you had, there is this Purion. 110, it will project, it will take one component. Uh, it will take the component we have, left-handed top and left-handed bottom. And with this Purion, then generate a non-trivial potential for the Goldstone, for the Higgs. In particular, the top loop will give you this correction, which will be proportional to the composite strong scale. And the, um, the important thing is that there is this minus sign for the master. This minus sign is very important. So if this contribution is the dominant, you sum up this one with the gauge one, etc. Then the if the mass term of the Higgs is negative, then you will get the potential of the correct form. You will get a Mexican hat, and then there would be electric symmetry breaking. Any questions so far? If not, I will try to speak a little bit about the little hierarchy problem. So I already discussed that phenomenology tells us that lambda should be more like 10 TeV rather than one TeV. And this already becomes a little bit unpre un uh, unpleasant. So if you plug in 10 TeV he here for the, for, let's say for the top Yukawa, so the, for the, from the uh, top contribution, then you get the contribution to delta m square, the absolute value of the order of TeV squared. Okay. But we observe the Higgs mass to be something like 0 0.01 TeV squared. This is very simplistic because you have to look at the, the entire potential, the, the, the mass term and the quartic, and then uh, see what is the web and what is the mass of the particle. But this already shows you that there, there should be already some tuning. If there is Higgs and there, there is nothing up to the scale lambda, then there should be there should already be some little tuning. Perhaps that's the case. The big hierarchy problem is solved and we are left with a little bit of tuning. Maybe that really is the case. But maybe there is also some, some structure to it. For instance, the, maybe the, these partners could be light and help us um, make a separation between MH and, and lambda. So if we have partners, partners meaning the particles which from that scale onwards would cancel the quadratic divergence, then the partners will induce contribution which is proportional to their mass, not to the strong scale. Remember when I was discussing how you do explicit breaking, I always say when I gauge the entire thing, all the, the global group, then there is no explicit breaking. Or if I complete the multiplet, then there is no explicit breaking and then you don't develop the, the potential. That will be the, the way to, 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 to introduce the, the, the partners. But in this example where we had SU3, if you gauge the entire SU3, all Goldstones are eaten up by the new gauge bosons. There were five Goldstones, but there, there is, if you gauge the SU3, there will be five additional gauge bosons. They will be eaten up to give mass to these gauge bosons. 
In other words, there will be no Higgs. There will be no Higgs in that, that case. We have to do something else, something different. And these constructions go under the name of the little Higgs models. I'm showing them because the, these ideas are also shared in, with some other kind of BSM that attempts to solve the little hierarchy problem. For example, the tw twin Higgs models, they share pretty, pretty similar idea. So I think it's worth to learn something about this stuff. So idea is as follows. G, the, 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 the global group of the strong sector is, S, is the product of, uh, there are two copies of the, uh, of, the, of the original problem. So there'll be SU3 times SU3. And it's broken spontaneously to SU2 times SU2. So you can think of the previous example just doubled. So we have a U1 field for the first G on H and the U2 field for the second G on H, okay? So it's SU3 to SU2, but there are two copies and two, 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 two fields, two Goldstone fields. That is the strong sector. This is uh, given to us by some strong dynamics, which we don't know the details, but that, that's the, the global uh, structure. Now we gauge the diagonal subgroup of G. The diagonal subgroup, which I call SU312, so it's the diagonal of this thing. The diagonal means that, you know, the rotation from one and two, we fix them to be the same. And the condensate breaks this diagonal subgroup to the diagonal of H. That is the, the, the strong confinement. Okay. Now, uh, so we have SU3 gauge group broken down to SU2. SU2 will have Ws, but we will have five bro uh, gauge bosons that will become massive. And these five gauge bosons will eat five goldstones. So five new gauge bosons get massive by eating five goldstones. Nonetheless, we have five goldstones left. And these goldstones that are left, they could play the role of the Higgs. The mass of this gauge boson is G times F. And the strong dynamics is usually four pi F. So we have five gauge bosons left and these, these could play the role of the, of the Higgs. Uh, I'm repeating it again. So let's try to, to calculate the potential for these things. So if you take the, the, the Lagrangian, you have these U1 and U2, they are triplet of SU3 gauged. Uh, they are both triplets of SU3 gauged, okay? And this is the Lagrangian. They will get this VEV, which is this F, which will lead to spontaneous symmetry breaking. So let's come to the loops. Let me take this Lagrangian here. Because we chose that this gauge group is the diagonal of the two, we have somehow completed the thing. So if, when you start to compute diagrams, you will see that, for example, diagrams that involve only one coupling, only this coupling, for instance, they will be proportional to U dagger U. Or, or if the, they involve the other one, they will be pro, 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 proportional to U2 dagger U2. And remember that these things do not depend on the goldstones. This will not give the potential for the goldstones. It is only when we have both couplings switched on that we can get something non-trivial. For example, U1 dagger U2 squared. But this bidimensional analysis will be then logarithmically sensitive to the, to the scale. And this mechanism goes under the name of collective breaking. Okay. What is in practice implies is that uh, now you can expand these use and, and see like the individual pieces. 
for example, for the Higgs, when you calculate, well, what happens is that the usual contribution from the standard model W will be canceled by these gauge bosons, the quadratic correction to the, to the mass by the partners. And this is roughly this cancellation. Okay. Very similar story in the fermionic sector. So we introduce one term and the second term, and there will be U1, U2, and there will be two fields, T1 and T2. Know that we have only a single psiel. So when we have single psiel, we explicitly break the, the global group, but we res respect the diagonal subgroup. This explicit breaking will generate the potential, but in order to generate the potential, we need both of these interactions. So for example, this one and this one comes from the first term and that one and that one comes from the second term. So we have again this collective symmetry breaking, which gives you this U1 dagger U2 square uh, with, a, with the logarithmic sensitivity to the cutoff. Here again, you can expand and see the Higgs interactions. And effectively you will have the top quark and there will be a heavy top quark. This will be the heavy top quark. The, the loops from the top quark and it, the heavy top partner will cancel out. Again, without entering into too many details of, the, of this, so that the idea is again that you have the Higgs and then you, the next thing are these partners. And then above that is the compositeness scales. So the, 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 the lightest particles of the new sector that we hope to see at the LHC are these top partners and heavy gauge, some heavy gauge bosons. Any questions about the co collective symmetry breaking? No? Okay, so minimal composite Higgs is the minimal realistic model. It is based on this, uh, on this global symmetry breaking. And it has exactly four Goldstone bosons. It has some properties like uh, custodial symmetry is built in, which is important to protect uh, the under, the, for example, the raw parameter from, from the, which is precisely measured at left. So it has some good phenomenological properties. In the compo composite Higgs, in the minimal composite Higgs, we don't have elementary partners. Like the difference between the little Higgs and the, the minimal composite Higgs, minimal composite Higgs model, is that in the little Higgs, we have these elementary fields, uh, uh, but in the composite, minimal composite Higgs, we don't, we don't have them. So either we have this little tuning or we have part of the composite sector to be a little bit lighter. So we can have partners which are composite, okay? That are maybe a little bit lighter than the, than the compositeness scale. And then um, they could make this uh, Coleman-Weinberg uh, dependence on the cutoff softer uh, at uh, reduce the cutoff dependence, okay. So this is how we get Yukawa interactions. This is the so-called partial compositeness. We have elementary field, which mixes partner, which is composite field. And then composite field talks to the composite Higgs. Okay. And the last slide is, is this one. So this is one of the Atlas analyses of the Higgs couplings from seven and eight TV data. Uh, where they measure the modification of the Higgs coupling to the vector bosons and to fermions, and they get this, uh, these measurements. And the minimal composite Higgs predicts the deviations from these couplings. So the, the variations of this model go in different way, and then you can see what is the limit on this Xi, xi parameter. Okay, that, that's it. Anyone? Do you have any questions? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear. Um, at least I don't have any questions for now. 
I think I need to let it sit in my head for a little bit too. All right. I, I hope this was not too heavy. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me offline. And um, so then next time we talk about the, the, the extra dimensions. Um, that's it. Thank you.